All right, welcome back to Anton Math. Now in this video, as promised, I'm going to be talking about the signs of the different trigonometric functions. And I don't mean signs as in this kind of sign, I mean as in positive or negative sign um, that we have associated with the different quadrants. Now it should be pretty clear, uh, since sine of t is equal to y, cosine of t is equal to x, that these are going to follow in line with what we did in the past with looking at the signs of just a, a general point in our different quadrants. And I'll let you think of it that way uh, on your own, you know, kind of build familiarity. It's not a bad exercise. But I'm going to introduce a, a little uh, tool that we can use to remember this. Now what this is is a little acronym. The acronym is all students take calculus. And I started in quadrant one and I went um, I went in order from quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. All students take calculus. Now what this means is, it, up in here in quadrant one, what this A means is it does mean all. This means that all trig functions in quadrant one or where T is in quadrant one, right, are going to be positive. This S over here stands for sine. This means that over here sine is positive, and we know that if sine is positive, we must also have that cosecant is positive, don't we? So this s not only means sine, but also means cosecant. In the bottom left here, this means tangent, this t. So tangent is positive, and you guessed it, we also have that cotangent is positive, right? If tangent is positive, cotangent also needs to be positive, just looking at our definition here. And in quadrant four, I have cosine. That means that cosine is positive. And also it follows then that secant is positive. Now, like I said at the beginning, this should be pretty clear just based on our definitions. I know that sine is equal to y, so sine should be positive in the first and second quadrants. So it falls under all and sine. Cosine is equal to x, so it should be positive in quadrant one and quadrant four, the same places where cosine is positive. Tangent and cotangent are ratios between y and x. So they're going to be positive either when x and y are both positive or when x and y are both negative. So in other words, quadrant one and quadrant three. Now the nice thing about this anagram is if I'm in quadrant two, for example, I know that this is s. So that means that sine is positive. It is, um, it's kind of exclusive. It's an exclusive club over here, signs only. This means that cosine is also negative, tangent is negative. I can infer that from this s. So if it's not all, it means that this is the only thing that's positive with, of course, the corresponding function that I've written below here. Now, why is this useful? Um, you know, you may ask yourself, well, we spent a lot of time uh, trying to figure out terminal points in section 5.1. Um, I already know what y and x are going to be, so I don't need to know if they're going to be positive or negative. And that's true. That's absolutely true. However, if you're finding a terminal point every time that you want to find just sine, let's say, you're finding not only sine, but you're also finding cosine. You're doubling up your work. Now that's fine if you need to find both sine and cosine, but this is going to help us to use reference numbers in a way that's going to be geared just towards sine or cosine. And let's get, let me give you some examples. Let's say I want to find what cosine of negative 3 pi over 4 is. Okay, now I know that negative 3 pi, pi over 4 has a reference number t bar of pi over 4, doesn't it? Right, negative 3 pi over 4, let me draw it out for you, negative 3 pi over 4 is about right here. All right, I start from my initial position, I go in the negative direction, Here's pi over 2, and I go an additional pi over 4. Now I know that with a t-bar of pi over 4, cosine's going to be root 2 over 2. Now all that's left for me to know is, is it going to be positive root 2 over 2 or negative root 2 over 2? And I already know that because it's in quadrant 3, only tangent and cotangent are positive there, so this is going to be equal to negative root 2 over 2. And we're done. Right? I didn't need to bother with my y-coordinate, because my y-coordinate doesn't really come in useful here, does it? When we're finding terminal points, we need that y-coordinate. Or if we're finding sine and cosine simultaneously, for example, if we need to find tangent, 
then we're going to need to know what both y and x are. But in the case where we're just looking at cosine or sine, uh, it's enough to know this. All students take calculus. Let's do one more quick one. This is going to be a pretty quick video. Uh, let's look at, um, let's do one with sine now just to get a little familiarity. Let's look at sine of 2 pi over 3. All right. With sine of 2 pi over 3, I know I have a t bar of pi over 3. Right. My 2 pi over 3 is about right here. So I'm going to have this t bar of pi over 3. I need to go pi over 3 of the way in addition to what I've already done in order to get to a full pi. And I'm in quadrant 2. Quadrant 2 is s. So I know that sine is positive. So this is going to be equal to positive. Well, first of all, I didn't say my y coordinate for pi over 3. I'll give you a second to think about it. All right, you're done. Root 3 over 2, right? And again, because I know I'm in quadrant 2, this is going to be positive root 3 over 2, not negative root 3 over 2. Now here, my x value would be negative 1 half. But again, I don't really need to know that, right? That's extra information that I don't really need here. All right. Now in the next section, well, actually, I wanted to make one more note here. Um, if you're working with any values on your homework, and, and, and homework problems will c indeed come up that don't deal with these uh, reference numbers, these values that we're used to using. If you're working with anything like decimals or, um, you know, something with a weird denominator like 5 pi over 17, something like that, and you're using a calculator, it's very important that calculator at this time you need to use radian mode. Very, very important. Right? Everything that we've done so far is in a unit of measurement that we call radian mode. Right? The other option that a lot of calculators default to is degrees. Okay? So not degrees. If we want you to use degrees, or if the problem is using degrees, it will specify degrees. It'll say something like 35 degrees, etc. Anything that has pi in it, that's usually going to be radians, and your calculator needs to be set to radian mode, or it's going to be giving you the wrong answers for your homework. So make sure to check that if you're doing any problems like that. All right. Now in the next video, we're going to review a little bit about even and odd functions and how that can help us out with um, these trigonometric functions here.